The reason I went to medical school was not only that I wanted to learn to heal the sick, I did, but I also wanted to learn how to prevent illness and to learn what the causes of illness were. And they don't teach you that in medical training. When you're young, you become a doctor hoping to make a difference. And by the age of 55, I was having to face the reality that I wasn't really making much of a difference. And I didn't often see people who look really well as a result of my treatments. I am a doctor, a medical doctor by background, and I worked in the NHS for five years. Then I left and began to practice natural medicine. I saw patients who'd been given anywhere up to 15 medications, and I don't know, I think at that point I stopped seeing the benefit of what we were doing. I found there were many frustrations working within the NHS. I did not have the clinical freedoms to be a good doctor. When I was working general practice, I got my wrists slapped because my prescribing budget was so low. Because I prescribed so few drugs, that meant I was a bad doctor. In 1910, Abraham Flexner produced a report on the status of medical education in North America. The report was highly critical of any medical treatments that were not based on pharmaceuticals. It also laid out strict criteria for medical education. The report probably would not have had a big impact if it were not for the fact that it was backed by the most powerful philanthropic organization at the time. As a result of the Flexner report, a large number of medical schools in North America had to close and all forms of complementary or alternative medicine disappeared from medical education, including nutritional studies. It could be argued that medical education became more scientific as a result of the Flexner report. However, it also explains why, to this day, doctors are not taught nutrition and often dismiss any medical treatment that is not based on a drug. Many of the medical schools that had to close were also in deprived areas, adding to the existing deprivation. Surprisingly, the Flexner report is not often talked about today, and the philosophy that the report presented has since been reinforced by a global pharmaceutical industry that is now worth almost one and a half trillion US dollars. Of course, some drugs really do work and are saving lives every day. However, a system that only gives credibility to one modality is not serving patients well. I want to examine the continued legacy of the Flexner report. Legitimate options for patients have been ridiculed and suppressed for more than a century. A serious conversation about the kind of medical system that we want is long overdue. To do this, I need your help. Independent documentary film is in some ways more difficult than ever to produce. We can only bring this film into existence as a team. So if you also feel that this is an important conversation to have, then please consider being involved in this project. Thank you. We started with 18 volunteers who gave up sugar and starchy carbs along with me, so I learned with them. The astonishing thing for me was when the blood results came in, I'd never seen anything like it. I didn't know it was possible. When you work on the gut bacteria, when you work on inflammation, you see all those markers come down and you've done a lot of work on diet and lifestyle. Well, it was probably diet and lifestyle that created that problem in the first place. If we do a lot of healing work that way, we see that problem go away and stay away. So there is herbal medicine. There is also homeopathy. And there is also osteopathy and chiropractic and massage and physiotherapy and all these body work approaches which work fantastically on the mechanical level. Homeopathy works on the energy level. And then you have the traditional Chinese medicine like Chinese herbs, acupuncture, Japanese shiatsu, acupressure and hundreds of other forms of so-called alternative medicine. Drug medicine has been uh, uh, has now taken over general practice and, uh, and hospital medicine to a very large extent uh, and patients are not getting the treatments that they need, that they deserve and that they ask for.